Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone all around the world. Welcome to Let's Study a Book. Glad to have each and every one of you on. I'm excited. We are still in our great book by Mr. Marcus Buckingham, Love Plus Work. But I am not going to say any more because I'm about to hand it over to our master trainers for the day, all the way from sunny Florida, because we got an exciting announcement today, y'all. All the way from sunny Florida, the often imitated but never duplicated award-winning humor consultants, Mr. and Mrs. Phil and Susan Sorrentino. Thank you, Grace. Well, today we're honored to have one of our very own, Ibrahim, um, on the call. And he's going to be talking about um, publishing a book and going through that process. And he's going to be using our latest book that he um, helped us with as an example. And I have put it in the chat along with our um, Leading with Fun book that came out. They both came out at the same time. So anyways, that'll be fun. And we'll see how much time we have that we'll go on to um, studying the book after after that. Hey, wait, wait. Thanks for being here. Before we go, we, your, our guest speaker has had a, something happened in his life yes. that uh, all of us are blessed. He became a dad for the first time. So I'd like to just hear from him. What's it like about that? And tell us about your experience. Okay. So uh, my experience was um, with just 14 hours of being by my wife's side <laughs> while she was in labor and just realizing how uh, long I just need to shut up after this in like everything marital. Cause, oh man, uh, the stuff women go through. Wow. Just newfound respect. Um, and, uh, and here, here's the interesting thing while, um, she, she was in, in the labor room, like, uh, a, a delivery room towards the end when she was taken on a stretcher there after the epidural, I was with her and I was encouraging her. I was like, you're, you're just brave. Just carry on, continue, you know, just push, push. I was with her right there. Uh, and as soon as they delivered the baby and they just put the baby on her chest and then they took the baby for like cleaning it all. I just fainted. I literally fainted. And uh, <laughs> I guess it was the sight of blood. Uh, all I remember is just saying you're you're very brave, and then just opening my eyes with six doctors <laughs> all around me, and my wife was like, they just forgot all about me, and they were all over you. Uh, but I'll tell you something: if you want peace in life, you know, just get knocked out. It's just it's amazing. It's better than sleep. There's just no thoughts no dreams or just complete emptiness, no stress whatsoever. And then you come back to life and you're like, yeah, taxes and bills and everything else. So after that, the change that has happened is I just, ha I'm just uh, appreciative of all the time I had when I, I didn't have a baby, when I thought I didn't have time. Now I know what it's like to really not have time. So it's just something we're adjusting uh, to, but the joy the baby brings um, is it's beautiful. And then they, they started all the, the traditions they have in Pakistan. You know, if it's a boy, you get to spill the blood of two goats in his honor. If it's a girl, you have to spill the blood of one goat and, you know, just take it up with, uh, take the inequality aspect of it with whoever designed the system but that's how it is so we we had we had two goats slaughtered and then just the meat was cooked and everyone from every like family members i didn't even know i had came <laughs> and they all handed the baby money and i ran my calculations and if i have 53000 babies i will be a millionaire just from the money that the family gives you <laughs> You're thinking, boy. You're thinking. Yeah. That's great. So, so that was my experience having a baby. But now let's get to uh, let's get to the main topic of the first part of this call, which is yeah. how you can use books aside from just learning from books. How you can use books in your life in other ways, mainly to create content. Okay. So the book we're going to be talking about is called Wisdom and Wit. 
You're freezing up. Book with 169 ideas that make you think and small. It's heard by the human consultants, the off cartoonist book, and the forward. Um, it's not something you have to sit and read from like cover to cover. And it's not something that you have to just read once. It's just a collection of great ideas. And you, you can just go to any page and you'll get something interesting. I'm just going to go to a random page here. And this one is called Forgiveness. And the cartoon says, it's harder to forgive people on an empty stomach. And... Um, and the thought is, but be loving, forgiving, and grateful. And you'll find reasons to be loving, forgiving, and grateful. That's an amazing idea. It's you, you have to realize that you start with the choice. You start by being loving, and then you find reasons for it. You don't wait for reasons to be loving, forgiving, and grateful. And imagine if you wake up in the morning, and you just flip to a random page and this is the inside. This is the first thing you encounter in your morning. It's not a notification. It's not how many likes I've gotten. Because whatever you see first thing in the morning sets the tone for the rest of your day. That's the number one way to use a book. If you have a nonfiction, even a fiction book, and it's by your bedside and instead of your phone, the first thing you see is that book. Flip to a random page and get a thought from there. You're not on the treadmill that social media and smartphones put you on. Because if the first thing you see in the morning is your notifications, you're asking yourself the question, what do I react to? So throughout the day, you're just going to be in the reacting mode. Or if you see something that just pisses you off, maybe someone you don't like uh, has said something and it's in the news. Now, you you start off pissed off, just as this thought said, right? Be loving, forgiving, and grateful. You'll find reasons to be loving, forgiving, and grateful. You wake up pissed off in the morning, you'll find reasons to be pissed off throughout the day. So, the first thing, the first way to use any book, and especially this book, the Quick Wisdom and Wit book, is to just have it by your bedside and make it something you look at before you look at your phone. You know, just get into that. It just every page in this book is just beautiful. I'll just flip to another random one. This one's titled Ideas. And here's what it says. Ideas are a dime a dozen. It is the people who put them into practice who are priceless. Too many people want to get paid for what they know as opposed to get paid for what they do. Just in the morning, just... The first thought you have in the morning is that, hey, what action are you going to take? This is just a beautiful mindset to be in. So again, I'm this is literally not planned. I'm just pulling up random pages from this book. And okay, let me just go to the cartoon uh, for this one. Okay, let me go to the cartoon. And the cartoon has to be about ideas. Okay, so this one uh, is an adult saying to a kid, ideas are a dime a dozen. And, and the child is saying, great, I need 120 million ideas to make a million dollars. So it's just a dime a dozen calculation. But you, so you laugh in the morning, you get a good idea in the morning, and it sets you on the right path. That's the first way to use a book. Again, you don't have to buy this book. You just any nonfiction uh, book, any good book, you can just have it by your bedside, and you just flip to a random page in the morning, first thing in the morning before you check your phone. That's just, that's that's the first way to use books. But I highly recommend getting uh, Quick Wisdom and uh, uh, for this. Next is to post pictures off pages or insights from the book, okay? So the first one is just your very first thought in the morning. And the second one is you can take pictures off the book, just highlight something you like, take a picture of it, share it on Instagram. Just the content that you can create based on other people's work is amazing. And with this book, you have this added advantage of there being like a hundred plus car cartoons. Like there's just a lot of cartoons, I've not counted. And you can just literally take a picture of the cartoon and you can post it on your Instagram. You're gonna get your likes, but more importantly, you will 
be that person who doesn't use social media to show off. You'll be the person who doesn't use social media to inspire envy in others. You'll be someone who uses social media to educate and help others. Okay. You might not be a coach. You might not be an educator. You might not be an entertainer, but you're still a human being who has a platform who has like, even if you have six or five people who always see everything you post and your responsibility is to give them something good, something that isn't all about you. We're all too self-absorbed and that's what social media and algorithms do. They just push us to be self-absorbed and self-centered and everyone's just posting whatever is making them look best. And you take the time and you take a picture of any page in any book that you find interesting. And you're like, hey, I thought you should see this. You'll, re- you'll notice that more people start liking your content yeah. because um, there will be people who will say, hey, happy for you every time you post about your victories. But let's be honest, man. People want valuable stuff. And when you post a cartoon, that educates people or just a snap of a small idea that you want to put out into the world, you create truly valuable content. So uh, Quick Wisdom and Wit Books gives you dozens of opportunities of just flip to any single, every page, any page you can flip to, take a picture, post it on Instagram. You can post it on your story. You can post it on WhatsApp, whatever app you use. I'm just going to go to a random page in this book, just pull out a cartoon. Okay. What is the secret to a happy marriage? There's a guy uh, talking to a couple and he's like, what is the secret to a happy marriage? And then the, the guy from the couple says, being happy and being married. So that's that's a very good, um, uh, that's just a very interesting insight that you can just put out into the world by just taking a picture and all the likes and all the follows that you get from that go to you. They don't go to Phil and Susan. Okay, so that's just yet another reason to buy this book, but you can do this with, any book you have, just take a random picture of a page and then you, you have a bunch of hashtags like bookstagram, you know, just Google book hashtags and you will get a bunch of hashtags with which you can post stuff from different books to build a following, okay? The algorithm will be on your side. Quickly, let's move to the third out of seven, three out of seven is social media captions. Um Phil and Susan's book is just caption gold mine. Give me a second. I'll just drink water. This is a caption gold mine. I'll just flip to a random page. And this is something that you cannot do with every book because every book's every sentence isn't caption worthy. With this book, it's like this is a book that has been whittled down from 10, 20,000 words down to a few hundred words. Okay. So every single sentence here is gold. When you are out front, the only thing they can see is your behind. And I hope that is not your best sign. That's that's an insight from Phil and Susan. And that's just a great thing to put out on like a Facebook status, on a tweet, on threads, or just as a picture post on Instagram. Um, I'll just go to... Yet another one, this one says, hold up. It used to be, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Today, if it is working, it is becoming obsolete. It's just so relevant in the age of AI, but it was relevant in the age of mass immigration and it was relevant in the age of uh, just industrialization. It's just an ever like eternally true thing that you can post online. So yeah, you just sharing the ideas in this book online is the, uh, is the third way you can use this. And the fourth is thought of the day. Just like right now, what I've been doing is I've been mentioning different thoughts from this book. And then I've been talking about it. You could do the same thing and create reels out of it. You can create short form content out of it. The next decade is the decade of short form content. Anyone who gets good at making short form content is going to is going to um, build a following. And eventually when AI takes all, all the jobs there are, 
all you have left will be the communities you built. Okay, the platform you built. The, There's a quote right there. What you uh, just said is a quote. Okay. <laughs> so, but but I didn't put it in a book. I just arrived at it by talking about something I found in the book. So that's the thing. Once you pull out something, okay, so uh, thought of the day, for example, I just go, got to this page, which says happiness, it's your choice. Peace of mind, it's your choice. Better relationships, it's your choice. So that's the thought. And now the moment I say this, I was like, happiness, it's your choice. When was the last time I chose to be happy? When was the last time I chose peace of mind instead of winning a specific argument? Better relationships. When was the last time I chose to have a better relationship with someone who wasn't actively trying to have a better relationship with me? And just my choice made them try harder on their part. Like the, your experiences these come to mind. These are, these are things that we've learned over being together and married and working together in business for over 40 years. So, you know, we didn't have them right off. We, we learned and then. Yes, every, every single sentence here is just a gold mine purely because I, I couldn't arrive at this collection of ideas because I've just not lived long enough. I've not had that much experience. So having access to all of this, it's like truths that I didn't even have words for. But the moment I read this, it, I'm like, oh, this, this, this is true. It just feels true. And when I talk about it, when I say, when I read this out loud with the camera on me, the next thing I do is I talk about it. It's just so natural because these, these words are just invitation for you to share your experience or your thoughts. And thought of the day could be content. You could just post short form content or you could have that discussion with someone in your family or in your friend circle. It's just, you can have productive discussions, which is the perfect segue to the fifth way. Okay, it's just a quick recap. First, morning thought. You can just have a book by your bedside. You pull it up before you look at your phone and instead of your notifications being the first thing that move you that day, you have something productive uh, be the first thought of your day. The second is you can take pictures of the pages in this book, share it on Instagram, social media, wherever. Um, third is you can literally type text from this book. You can type text from this book or any book that has like good text. And you can make status, uh, uh, Facebook status uh, updates, or you can have like tweets, whatever text, uh, social media there is. Uh, fourth is thought of the day. You can just literally pull up a page, read out loud what's written, and then give your thoughts on it. That can be your content, or it could be just a discussion with a friend, okay? And that brings us to the fifth way, which is a discussion group, okay? You can start a discussion group around books. This is exactly what this call is, and you can do it just because you do it here doesn't mean you cannot have your own discussion groups. You can start your discussion groups as a parent. I'd love to do it with uh, when when my uh, ch child grows up enough. We can start discussion groups about like family discussion groups uh, with books. This is just a very productive thing. And because community and a sense of belonging is actually a human need, uh, you need books like this to have discussions that are, are high quality and that nudge you towards higher order thinking. Again, any good book will do this. You can have discussion groups with any good book. Right now, the book you guys are discussing isn't uh, Phil and Susan's book. But Phil and Susan's book is a very accessible book. It's a book that... Um, resonates with anyone so you don't have to look at people uh, start a group with people who um, are trying to be ceos or a book with people who are trying to be rappers or a book uh, like some books shoehorn you into specific like if you get uh one of uh, like my older books uh, 
a charm like a narcissist. It's about charisma and social skills. You pull that book, you cannot have a discussion with someone who's not interested in building up their social skills. But you think of wisdom and wit, you have a certain group in one senator, uh, one and one guy is dead. It's just relevant to everyone. So this is a really accessible book, which brings me to the sixth point, which is gift. You can use this book as a gift. It's if, if there's one thing out of all seven things, I would say this book is a gift more than it is anything else because it's quite literally a book that keeps giving. And as we know, the cliche, a gift that keeps giving is just a valuable gift. You get this book on anyone's bedside, you're changing their lives. And this book is relevant to pretty much everyone. Like if, if there's a baby, this book is relevant to the baby. It's it's just relevant to everyone. So it's, it's, and it's very it's tough. Bathroom, to it's a good bathroom book. Uh, yeah, good bathroom book, good bedside book, and a good coffee table book. It's 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 a great. And I would actually recommend having it as your bathroom book. Uh, bathroom books are not in vogue anymore, but still, instead of yeah. your smartphone, having this book is just much much better. You you come out of uh, your restroom much better rested with a book like this instead of just doom scrolling online and with your social media. So this book would make an excellent gift. Again, I'm going to sip water. This book will make an excellent gift. And with uh, Christmas just around the corner, I believe in specific states, if you ordered this book today, you'll definitely have it before Christmas. So, uh, especially if you have Prime. So, I would highly recommend if you, if you if you need anything last minute as a gift, um, you can get the paperback for this. I I think paperback is a good economical option if you're if you're giving it out. If you want it on your coffee table, get the hardcover. It's twenty two dollars and twenty two cents. Um, but I would say go with paperback. It's seven point seven seven dollars and you know, you earn eight points uh, on Prime with this. So it's definitely, uh, and it, here's here's what it says for me. Um, for my company's address, um, my company's US address, it says I'm going to get a, f- a free Prime delivery d- by December 18 to 27. So there is a chance that I might miss Christmas. Okay, I'll be up front. But if you get it today, the odds of you getting it by December 18 are higher than the odds of you getting it by December 27. So again, get as many copies of this as you can afford to. Um, again, it's it's just not just the fact that you're going to give it as a gift to your friends and raise your profile because they're going to love the kind of gift this is. Uh, because let's be honest, this will be the only book there going to finish reading because it's just a few hundred words um but you'll also be giving a gift to phil and susan by uh, acknowledging the work they have done this is a collection of their life's wisdom okay it's just 169 ideas and they've had hundreds of thousands of ideas throughout their life and this just sums up what they want to leave as their legacy Okay, this is 169 ideas that are close to these guys' hearts. So if they have given you any value that you believe is worth more than $8, you got to order at least one paperback. <laughs> okay. So, this is, so, this, just, this is, so just, just so you guys know, this was sprung on me this morning that we were doing this. So this isn't something that we planned. Uh, I, I feel a little bit uh, commercializing, but... Uh, I really appreciate it, Graham, you doing this and wanting to do this for us. You, you you bring so much value to us. And think about you. As you think of your own quotes, write them down, capture them, because then you can create your own book like this. And now that we have the model to do that, every one of you can add this. So there's no excuse to not having a book. Yeah. And that's yeah, Phil always being a giver. 
-hmm. Yeah. So, so um, you guys can also create your own books with the codes that you have. And one way to arrive at those codes is by just taking a thought from this and then you just turn your camera on and start talking. You will stumble into some gold. Okay. So uh, again, what was, if, one, what was if, the one that you said? I don't want to miss it. You said something that it's obsolete, but what could be as community? Oh, um, I, 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 it was along the lines of community and platform is all that will matter uh, once AI takes everyone's jobs. Um, but I will have to watch the recording to get to the exact uh, wording. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why so, you need to capture it. And that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you got to capture it. So, guys, once again, uh, just uh, the quick wisdom and with the books uh, link is in the chat. And I'm just going to get to the, the last thing. way you can use it. The final way you can use it, um, this book or any book, is to make your own content. Okay, you can make your own blog posts, you can make your own email newsletter, like thousand plus words, and you can make your own long form videos using books um, that you have not written. Others books, you can do that. And you, the way to do that is with Antonio's content commentary formula. I'll just recap that formula for you. Step one, you start with the author's thought. So I will just demonstrate this with scrolling to a random okay this one says friends what's the quote around friends okay okay so that this is a bit uh, long it says first rate people like to be around all kinds of people because they believe the same spirit that is in them is the spirit that is in others second rate people like to be around uh, third rate people because they can say i'm not as bad as they are and they feel very uncomfortable around first-rate people. Now, here's the thing. We all know first-rate, second-rate, and third-rate people. So now when I say this, <clears throat> I can go into my experience. I can say, oh, I, uh, my mentor, Mr. Uh, Rafi Mujahid, was a first-rate person. He hung out with everyone, and he had these unique thoughts, and he eventually started a school where 30 people would have 30 different, like 30 pupils would have 30 different exam um, sheets uh, based on their specific strengths. So in his exam rooms, there were no invigilators because if you can't answer the question on your exam sheet, no one else can help you because your exam sheet is built according to your strengths. So there was no reason to cheat. Um, and this reminds me of Rafi because he's the first rate person and now I'm going to ask you who's the first rate person that comes to your mind and did you note them just avoiding people or did they like to hang out with everyone so first the author's thought then my own experience or just research if I don't have experience I could just go into first rate people like you know I just look up people and I could talk about Martin Luther King he had so many people of his own race opposed him. Um, so many people of his own religion opposed him because they didn't like that he, he could sit with everyone and they didn't like that he could, could move across the worldly and the religious circles so easily. But he was a first-rate person. History has proven it. And what did he do? He was open to talking to any, just anyone. And again, so that's not my experience. I wasn't fortunate enough to meet this great man, but I know of him because of research. So you can use research to uh, for your commentary, or you can use personal experience, like I talked about Mr. Rafi Mujahid, uh, my English teacher from high school. And then at the end, you sandwich it with your own thought. You start with the author's thought, then you agree or disagree, and then use your own experience or research Talk about it, and then with your own thought, you end it. Now, this video is content. And if I typed it out, that would have been an article. So you can use this book, uh, Quick Wisdom and Wit, or any book to create your own content. And we're quickly moving to a world where everyone is a content creator, and everyone has a community, and everyone has a platform, and that might be all that matters when all work is done by AI. All that will matter 
is whose trust you have and who believes that you have value to offer. And if there's one thing that you can do to be more valuable is to have a good book and then do good work with it. Again, highly recommend get, getting quick with uh, uh, wit and wisdom, but you can just use any uh, good, decent book that you have lying around and start doing this because practicing this is more important than getting Phil and Susan's book. But if there's a second most important thing that is show your respect, admiration, and um, reciprocity Abraham. by getting Phil and Susan's book. Thank you. Right. Abraham, you know, community comes out of trust. Trust comes out of rapport. Rapport comes out of getting to know each other and shared experience. You and I now have a shared experience. Susan was giving yeah. birth to our second child, Sarah Maria. And how long were you in labor, hon? 14 hours. And her? Talk about Susan with Sarah Maria. It was like 24. She was stubborn. Oh. And so they labored, and labored and labored and labored and labored. And while the doctor was on the golf course, he finally <laughs> came in and I had a C emergency C-section. They gave her oh. an epidural. Which an epidural is this long needle that they stick up yeah. in the back of her spine. Well, when they did this, I fainted. And then oh, the next thing okay. I, I saw them doing that. I fainted. The next thing I know, I wake up and I see these four faces like you saw in front of me, and they go, oh, "Are you all right?" So we have that shared experience now. So we have a lot more rapport now than we did before because of that okay. shared experience. Okay. Well, you, you know, my thank wife, you for, well, my wife was like. Uh, you guys even charge us double. Just get the epidural guy to hurry the hell up. And I was thinking, I can't afford double. <laughs> Why is she promising double? <laughs> Abraham, they were in such a hurry when they did gave me the epidural. They gave it the wrong spot. They had to do Ooh. it a second time. And mm. then I, because of what they did, I had spinal headaches. I had to lay mm. flat in the bed for a week in the hospital instead of going home in three days. I couldn't even raise my head just a little bit or I would be in severe pain. So mm. needless to say, I didn't use that doctor for the next delivery. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, uh, Thankfully, our guys didn't, didn't do anything like that. We were so scared about the side effects of the epidural. But it's just fortunately just didn't happen and that thing went well. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But once you hear yeah. that baby cry, you forget all of that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I, I did I did hear my baby cry before I, I fainted. So that, that's good news. <laughs> Phil fainted too. Phil actually fainted, yeah. Well, that's what we did sooner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you for letting me join. Again, I'll just recap everything. If you have a good book, you can keep it by your bedside. The number one way to use a book, aside from just reading it, is to make it your first like thought in the morning. Just flip to a random page in the book. Uh, second uh, way you can use it is by snapping pictures of pages that you find meaningful. They could be uh, like highlighted or underline, and you can post those on your Instagram with book-related hashtags like Bookstagram. Third is you can use text from the books that you read as social media captions or you know text posts. Fourth is you can have them as thought of the day. Like you just read out loud um, a thought from the book and then just talk about it for a minute or so. That makes your short form content. Or you could have the thought of the day with people in person, and that could be your discussion group, like this call is for many of you guys. You can start your own smaller calls. Um, sixth is you can give the book as a gift, and it can be a compliment, actually. If, if you give someone a book on time management that says that I believe you should manage your time like you're a busy person, or if it's a book on wealth management, it could be like, hey, I know you make money. And this is how you manage it. So the book you give as a gift says a lot about what you think about the other person. And Phil and Susan's book is just universal. So you can just give it to just anyone and it will just resonate with them. And seventh is you can start making your own content. You start by just reading a passage from the book. Then you just uh, cast your experience or just your research 
and follow it up with your own thoughts. That is your newsletter. That is your personal essay. That is your blog article. That is your YouTube video. Or that could be your webinar. So these are the seven ways you can use. Uh, I'll, I'll put them in chat as well. Um, these are the seven ways you can use books other than just reading them. And I highly recommend getting Phil and Susan's book um, because that's what sponsored uh, this section of the call. Bye-bye. Oh, we'll stay on. You may want to stay on to hear that. I am on. I am on. I'm just not on like the, the uh, I turned off my camera and my Thank speak, you very much. Uh, well, everybody my... give him some appreciation. Show him, show him the, what you thought of what he did. All right. Well, Grace, we're about ready to get into now. At the, uh, we like to keep these to an hour. An hour, if you want to be with that, we'll understand that. that we'll, we'll, when we'll cut it off, I haven't decided yet. We'll decide as we go through. Well, hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on. Dude, I'm going to do something. You can't do it. Uh -oh, uh, when the preacher's in town, yeah, 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 the, yeah. Yeah. Town, the no, deacon sits no. down. Yeah, yeah. Ibrahim lit that on fire. Please, Grace, keep putting the thing in the chat. And y'all, please get the book. And everyone who's going to listen to this, get the book. This is now a commercial for the book and for Ibrahim <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, for Ibrahim as well. So if yeah, you want a book go. from Ibrahim, please go to Ibrahim as well, because he is a gifted, probably the best writer that I know for sure. So definitely do that. And just one more time, just so everybody knows, that's going to listen to audio someday between Phil and Susan. If y'all can unmute your mics and just let people know that Ibrahim was not talking to himself or Phil and Susan. If y'all could just unmute your mics and just, just scream on the microphone and let people know there was a crowd here. Ah, woo, there you go. Yeah, sure was. Yay. <laughs> All right, good stuff, good stuff. Grace, take it over. This, is, this was great, fantastic. I didn't want to talk, but I did want to do this.